It is sleeting and snowing outside on February 23rd at 1030 and we have a wonderful remote class going on. We're going to learn how to solve rational equations. Remember, there's no such thing any longer as a snow day. Doggone it. No such thing as a snow day. All right, let's solve rational equations. Equations with fractions in them. Equations. with fractions. That's what we're doing on this cold winter day. Unbelievable, I've never seen weather like this. What happened to global warming? The temperature is 16 degrees outside and it's sleeting and snowing. Rain you can actually hear. OK, but we're going to solve this equation. The trick to solving rational equations is to look at the denominators. OK, so our denominators are I need more room here. Our denominators are. I bet I have to let somebody in. Hi, Connor. We're just starting. All right, we're going to make a list of our denominators. We have a seven and a three and an A. What we need to do is cancel the seven and the three and the A. And so we need to come up with, with an algebraic statement that includes a seven, a three, and an A. So how about 21A? I think that would be delightful. So here we go, we're going to have one seventh, but I'm going to make the fraction bars long. There, and what I'm going to write beside the numerators is, Oh, let's just leave it very basic. How about seven times three times A? Then I don't even need to multiply the seven and the three. Seven times three times A and seven times three times A. Now this actually, what we're doing here is something that you used to call the lowest common denominator. Okay, now we would call it the lowest common multiple. And its job is to cancel out all the denominators. The sevens, the threes, and the a's. Because what happens when you cancel out denominators is you cancel out your fractions. So what's left here, now that the sevens are canceled out, is one times three times A, which is three A. Minus, the threes are canceled, so we'll have two times seven times A, which is 14A. 
equals the A's are canceled. So all we have is one times seven times three, which is 21. So now 3A minus 14A is negative 11A equals 21. And so I'll divide by negative 11 and divide by negative 11 and cancel out the negative 11s over here, and I'll be left with A equals negative 21 over 11. Now, was that fun or was that fun? Well, I don't know, could be fun. Let's do it again. It's the same trick we're using over and over again. So the first thing I do is I ask myself, what are the denominators? And the denominators Well, I only have a five and a six. So that's going to be my least common multiple of the denominators. That's 30, right? Yeah. So let's come on down here. I'll have X over five. And I'm going to make it easy and just multiply five times six like this. Because you know I'm going to be canceling in a minute anyway. Minus. X over six. And I'll multiply by five times six. And then I'll have 12, which is not a fraction, but I still have to multiply it by five times six. So this time I'll say 30. Now going back over here, I'll have five canceling the five and six canceling the six. No denominator here. So 6x minus 5x is 360. 6x minus 5x is x. So here's our answer just like that. Really quick. Could be worse, much worse. Stop me if you have any questions. Now here we have a fraction equals a fraction. When all you have is one fraction equals one fraction, you can do cross multiplication because it's really a proportion. So if I pretend that I have an X crossing at the equal sign, then I'll have a little um, roadmap, if you will, for multiplying along the diagonals. Five times Y minus seven, whoops, wrong color. Five. Five times Y minus seven equals four times Y plus three. And this will give us five Y minus 35 equals four Y plus 12. And then we just solve that. So here's my game plan. I think I'll move my variables over on the left and my constants over on the right. So why don't I move the 4y first? Let's 
y minus 35 equals 4y minus 4y is 0, and I'll bring down the 12. Then I will add 12 to both sides. Plus 35, plus 35. Well, why don't I just do it here? Plus 35. y equals 7 and 4, so 47. And we're done. Now, really and truly, I need to give a quick check to 47 to make sure it doesn't turn either of these denominators zero. Well, the only place I could put a 47 is right here. 47 plus 3 is 50, definitely not zero. So I don't have any worries right now. All right, these are getting more complicated, but we're always going to be doing the same thing, looking at the denominators. I really only have two different denominators. My denominators are my different denominators are x and x minus 5. So this is what I'm going to do. 100 over x minus 100 over x minus 5 equals 2 over x. And then I'm going to multiply the denominators, x times x minus 5, and multiply every numerator by x times x minus 5. Change the color. So times x times x minus 5 times x times x minus 5 and times x times x minus 5. And if I've chosen my least common multiple correctly, I will be able to cancel out every denominator. So let's see, get another color. I like using colors. Let's cancel with a blue. I'll, here I'll cancel the X's and here I'll cancel the X minus fives and here I'll cancel the X's. So what I'm left with, is 100 times x minus 5 minus 100 times x equals 2 times x minus 5. No denominators, no fractions. 100x minus 500 minus 100x equals 2x minus 10. Over here, I'll have 100, 100x minus 100x. So these guys disappear. And I'm left with negative 500 equals 2x minus 10. 
Now all I have to do is solve for X. So I will, what will I do? I'll add 10 to both sides of the equation. That zeroes this out. And I'm left with a 2X here, 2X plus zero if you want to call it that. Over here, negative 500 plus 10 is negative 490. So I'll have 2x equals negative 490. And I'll divide both sides by 2. So let's see, I'm going to say 2 into 490, and I know it's negative. 2 into 490, 2 goes into 4 2 times. That's zero. That's a four, believe it or not. Bring down the nine. Two goes into nine. Nah, that's a one. I have a better idea. I will turn on my calculator and let my calculator do the walking. Negative 490 divided by two, enter is negative 245. So I don't know where my head was then, but it's hopefully back a little better now. So, oh, no, no, don't do it, don't do it. Yay, okay. I did it again. And what did the calculator say? Negative 245. Okay, does that look right? I want you to shout out if I make an arithmetic mistake, okay? And here's an excellent opportunity. Look at this, we have three denominators. We have x squared minus 7x plus 6 and x minus 6 and 4 x minus 4 and it looks for all the world like we're going to have to multiply these three denominators together but thank goodness for factoring because they're not really that different this let's see Six equals negative one times negative six, and negative one plus negative six is negative seven. So this factors into x minus one times x minus six. And this is already an x minus six. And this factors into four times X minus one. So rather than having to multiply these ugly beasties, what we can do is say, okay, I really have three factors I need to cancel out. I mean, every denominator is composed of one of these, an X minus one, see there's the X minus one also, an X minus six, and there's an X minus six, and a four. So my LCM, my least common multiple of the denominators, which could make it a least common denominator, is four times X minus one, 
times x minus 6. And by using these together, I should be able to cancel out all the denominators if I rewrite this equation so that everything that can be factored is factored. So I'm going to do that. I'll have 6 over x minus 1 times x minus 6 minus 1 over x minus 6 equals 1 over 4 times x minus 1. Okay, here we go. Times 4 times x minus 1 times x minus 6 times 4 times x minus 1 times x minus 6 times 4 times x minus 1 times x minus 6. Okay. Now, we do one of my favorite things, which is cancel. Cancel, cancel. X minus 1s are canceled. X minus 6s, boom, are canceled. And I'll be left with 6 times 4. Over here, the X minus 6s cancel. And we'll be left in this fraction with 1 times 4 times the X minus 1. And over here, the 4s cancel and the X minus 1s cancel, leaving me with 1 times X minus 6. And no denominators. So we'll have 6 times 4 minus 1 times 4 is 4, 4 times x minus 1 equals 1 times x minus 6. And look how easy this looks now. 6 times 4 is 24. Minus 4 times x is minus 4x. Minus 4 times minus 1 is plus 4. Equals x minus 6. Twenty four plus four is twenty eight. We'll have twenty eight minus four x equals x minus six. And now that we have a constant term and a variable term on the left, a constant term and a variable term, only one of each on each side, that's when we start trading our variables. So I'm going to add 4x to both sides, and I'm going to add 6 to both sides of the equation. Negative 4x plus 4x is 0. 28 plus 6 is 34. Equals 5x minus 6 plus 6, or negative 6 plus 6 is 0. So plus 
zero. Oh, I was kind of hoping that we'd have something five would go into evenly, but oh well. On the left, we have 34. And on the right, we have 5x. I divide by 5. I divide by 5. So x equals 34 over 5. In most rational function problems, not all, but in most, you have to cancel. Here we canceled by GCF. I mean, not canceled, factored by GCF. And over here, we just factored a quadratic trinomial in which A equals one. So we use the A equal one method to factor here. A equals one method. Factoring lets you know that your factors aren't as bad as you think they're going to be. All right, here's our next rational equation. Notice it's an equation. So my denominators, I list my denominators. My denoms. Four Z squared minus thirty six Z minus three and Z plus three. Well, these guys aren't factorable here. I mean, they're as low as they're going to get. But this is factorable by, right now, the first thing I see is a greatest common factor because 36 equals 9 times 4. So we can factor this. Let's come down here and do it. 4z squared minus 36 equals 4 times z squared minus 9. And then this is the difference of two squares. 4 times z plus 3 times z minus 3. So that's what this is up here. because nine is three squared. So nine is a perfect square. Four times Z plus three times Z minus three. Now these are just Z plus three. Uh, uh, uh. That's a minus up there. There, minus three. Well, Barbara, I mean, really. Let's all go back to bed and start over. Z minus three, that's what this is. And this one is Z plus three. So notice that these two denominators are already inside that denominator. So our, our lowest common denominator, our least common multiple of the denominators is going to be four times C plus three times C minus three. 
OK. So now I factor. This. That's four times Z plus three. Times Z minus three. Plus three. Over Z minus three equals six. Over Z plus three. And I'd better put a separator down. Like that. OK, now, wow, this is going to cancel out completely, isn't it? OK, well, times 4 times C plus 3 times C minus 3 times 4 times C plus 3 times C minus 3 times 4 times, let me make sure that looks like a times, times Z plus 3 times Z minus 3. Here you go. OK, the 4's cancel, the Z plus 3's cancel, the Z minus 3's cancel, and I am left with a lonely little 1 right there. Um, over here, all that's going to cancel is Z minus 3. And over here, all that's going to cancel is Z plus 3. But the denominators are gone. So we're going to have 1 plus 3 times 4 is 12 times Z plus 3 equals 6 times 4 is 24 times Z minus 3. So I'll have 1 plus 12z plus 36 equals 24z minus uh, 72. Yes. Am I sure? 3 times 4 is 12. Carry the 1. Yes. Okay. All right, so here we are. I'm going to combine these two like terms before I do anything else. So I'll have 12z plus 37 equals 24z minus 72. And now, now that I am down to one variable term, one constant term on the left, one variable term, one constant term on the right. Now is when I can start moving the variable terms across the equal sign and the constant terms across the equal sign. So I will subtract 12z from both sides of the equal sign. You don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. It's just my habit. OK, then I'm going to add 72. To both sides of the equation. And I, I'll have 109. On the left. And 12Z on the right. Well, I certainly don't feel very hopeful about this, but let's see. Well, 
we're going to have Z equals. Now I am going to take out my graphing calculator and use one of my favorite tools. Clear. That's one of my favorite tools also. But 109 over 12. Hmm. Hmm. 109 divided by 12. Now, you see, that could be the answer, 109 over 12, or it could be reducible. So that's what I'm trying to see. Math, frac, enter. And no, I get back 109 over 12. So there is no way to reduce this. No way to reduce it at all. 109 over 12. How interesting. I'm looking to see if I made a mistake or if that's the actual answer. 4 times C plus 3 times C minus 3. 12 times C plus 3. Yeah, I mean, it looks right. Let me make sure that 3 times 24 really is 72, although I believe it is. 3 times 24? Yeah, 3 times 24. Negative 3, but okay. Okay, so that's it. Make sure I copied it right. Yeah, okay. Well, that being the case, let's move on. OK, now we're going to have a few word problems and then we're going to be done. Not a good day to make a snow angel. It sounds like the snow is sharp. The rate that's because it's snow and sleep. The ratio of the weight of an object on Mars to the weight of an object on Earth is 0.4 to 1. OK, so Mars is smaller than Earth. So here's Mars. I suppose I should make it red. Here's. Mars and we can put in a couple of canals. And here's Earth. Lots of water. OK. Now, if you have an object, some kind of object on Mars that weighs one pound on Earth, let's say pound, one pound on Earth, it will weigh only 0 0.4, 0 0.4 of a pound, 0.4 pound on Mars, okay? So that's our ratio going here. Now, we're being asked, how much will a 117 pound astronaut weigh on Mars? Well, let's see, 117 here. And we're saying, well, I don't know. I don't know how much this person is going to weigh on Mars. Now, as long as we keep our um, our ratios similar, okay? So that, I, I think I'll do it this way. Since we were given the weight on Mars first, I'm gonna put my Mars information on top and my Earth information on the bottom. So that we'll have 0 0.5 4 over, I don't know, 
equals Earth. Yeah. Earth is one to one seventeen. We didn't do it right. No, I didn't do it right. Because I decided to go Mars to Earth. OK, so here we go again. Forget the, the crazy colors. 0 0.4 to 1. Now. I don't know. That's what X is. To 117. Then we just cross multiply. 0 0.4 times 117 equals 1 times x. So that x equals whatever this is. So let us get our trusty calculator again. <laughs> We're going to multiply 0.4 times 117. And get 46.8. Now, what we have to do first before I just say, okay, 46.8 is read the instructions over here. Round to the nearest tenth as needed. Well, the answer is in tenths, so I'm just going to answer 46.8. So what we found was that if you've got an object on Mars that weighs 0.4 pounds there and one pound on Earth, then you're going to have the same kind of relationship going on to figure out how much an object weighs, this object being the astronaut, how much is the astronaut going to weigh on Mars if the astronaut weighs 117 pounds on Earth? And the answer is 46.8 pounds. I think I want to go to Mars. It would be easy to lose weight. <gasps> Forty six point eight. Forty six point eight. On Mars. So Mars, Mars to Earth, Mars to Earth. But actually. Well, you could set up proportions a different in various ways. I could have set it up, okay, Mars 1 to Mars 2, Earth 1 to Earth 2, like that. 0.4 to X equals 1 to 117. We could have done that and gotten the same answer. Um, there are all sorts of ways you can work these. 46.8. Pounds, pounds, yes. OK, now. This is one of my favorite problems. And it's real. I mean, have you ever wondered how they how naturalists, for instance, estimate the number of fish in a lake? Did they count every one? No, this is how it's done. To determine the number of trout in a lake, so here's the lake. And that that infinity looking thing is about to get a face and a smile, a smiley fish. This is my version of a trout. Looks nothing like a real trout. To determine the number of trout in a lake, a conservationist catches 143 trout, 
tags them, and throws them back in. That doesn't mean there are only 143 trout in the lake. We don't know how many trout are in the lake. Let's say there are X trout in the lake. Total. And the naturalist has tagged 143. So there are 143 tagged fish in the lake. Well, tagged trout. OK, this is the situation w later. Notice they don't say how much later. Later, another conservationist, maybe the same one, caught 40 trout. So later, this is later. Later. Forty trout were caught. Poor trout. And of that forty trout, ten were tagged. OK, so out of all the trout in the lake, 143 were caught, tagged and released. Now we go back and out of 40 trout caught, 10 were tagged. We're assuming a kind of randomization. You have to assume that. All right, so. Now we could put this together in several ways. We could say total to tagged or tagged to total. Let's do that. Tagged to total. Right, so initially 143 were caught and tagged out of a total of X trout in the lake. And then you come back again, the total caught is acting like the total amount of fit, uh, uh, the total number of trout in the lake. 40 is your total and 10 we're tagged. We're going to use this proportion to figure out how many trout there are in the lake. Now you can reduce 10 over 40 to 1 over 4 if you want to, or we can just go ahead and cross multiply and deal with that issue later. Okay. I am going to multiply X times 10, so I'll have 10 X. And that will equal 143 times 40. And then. You know you're going to end up dividing by 10. Might as well do it like this, so you only have to use your calculator once. But you don't have to. X is going to equal. OK. Calculator, calculator. OK. Let's lower this down some. 143 times 40 over 10. 143 times 40 
divided by 10. Five hundred seventy two. Now, how else could we have done it? Well, let's look and see what other problems. No, we don't have any more. So we can actually say, OK, well, how else could I have done this? Well, I could have gone the other way around. I could have said total over tagged equals total over tagged. So that we'd have X over 143 equals 40 over 10. And we could go ahead and cancel out those zeros, so we'd have four over one. Now you could say four X over 143 equals four, and then just multiply both sides by 143 in order to cancel out that 143. And so we get our calculator, we get our thing. And I'm going to say 4 times 143, enter. And again, we get 572. And there are other ways too that you could experiment with. We could, for instance, nah, that's boring. Uh, we could just keep doing this, and we would, if you did it correctly, you would get the answer 572 for the total number of fish in the lake. But anyway, that's it for solving rational equations and a couple of story problems at the end to boot. The important thing is with more complicated rational equations, go ahead and factor first because it can save you gigantic numbers. And then sometimes you don't need to factor at all. OK, if there are any questions, I'm glad to hang around. But if not, don't drive anywhere. My goodness sake, don't drive. Not on a day like this when you've got sleet and 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 snow and rain, freezing rain because it's only 18 degrees now. Um, it, this is going to be horrendous. And it's going to be much worse in the River Valley. Uh, where they're supposed to have dangerous amounts of ice bringing down trees and wires, you know, electrical wires, electrical cables. So it could be really devastating down there, which makes me glad I live in northwest Arkansas, and I hope we don't have it devastating. We did in 2009. So there we are. Have a wonderful day.